Hey, this is Keith uh, with Second Culture. I want to thank you for taking the time to stop in. Because I just want to tell you a little bit about Second Culture. Um, the difference between us, um, or at least the concept of Second Culture, is that we are approaching music the way that a painter would approach a painting of trying to do a sonic landscape, of trying to impress you on that level, not, not with giving you some kind of song or anything. And um, we take that approach too with the fact that as we're putting out a piece of music, an album, a CD, a release, it's only going to be out with the amount of, that we put it out. And when people buy it all up, it's gone. And so most music, when a creator puts it out, it's out there for his entire life. And that's not happening here. Again, that approach with a painter once somebody buys that up, it's gone. It's a rough time for musicians right now, and uh, I like it because it's like we can make music very quickly. So it's really a great time for what Second Culture is doing, which is myself, Andy Hudson, and Mark Florin at this time. The uh, release of Flying Potion, it's all just, just a lifestyle. It didn't have anything to do with like sitting there processing through all of this stuff of just trying to come up with the right notes and everything. It was really just a whole intentional um, need to create of doing it like very much in the same sort of process of a painter of not knowing why, where it's like maybe a little bit mental or a little bit insane. You know, one thing that we're always shooting for is uh, the beauty, the beauty of the music. What I'm trying to do and what I think about in the magic of second culture is trying to get to people with this kind of music that has an honesty to it. Because uh, when I fell in love with music, there was just uh, this way that it made me really transform my life. And so what, I, I mean, I don't think about it, but after the music is done, and when I listen to the music in headphones, what I think about is just wanting to it to have the impression of translating this beauty and, and this way that it moved me, seeing the world in a different way because of the music. And for that reason, it's, it's not instrumental, but like the way that Andy approaches the vocals is not with trying to like have a meaning, having a direct meaning. It's all, you know, the words that we use are in a made up language, just, it's not even a language really, it's just sounds. You know, of just having vocals and using the vocal box the way that he sings is as an instrument of not just like, I don't have anything against singers, but there's just so much about what's been going on with music that's just the same shit over and over and over. And, um, and, and there's just a way that I think that I used to look at music when I was a teenager, I was especially in love with progressive rock, especially the band Yes. The sound of second culture is really a lot more similar to uh, Berlin School crowd rock, of uh, especially Klaus Schultz's uh, Tangerine Dream. You know, that's, that's the sound of it, but a lot of the spirituality is what I got off of Yes, and this kind of like magic and this connection with God and with, with seeing things on a deeper level. It's the key, the node where all roads and ways meet. You'll arrive there at some point to see. It's the only place you need to know. I want to create a magic vibe. When I'm making the music, I want the music to have a magic through it. And then um, once we go to all the trouble of getting the music packaged and everything, I want all that magic to be like transformed into a person. And like, it doesn't even have to be uh, a defined thing. It's just a, of having this emotional feeling of, of once they're there, of just having them moved and having them be not knowing what happened to them in a way, but knowing that it was a very beautiful thing that just happened to them. 
and I, I get very sort of obsessive, compulsive, like a kid when I see something or hear something very beautiful, and I have to hear it over and over, and I want to, I want to take possession of my listeners like that. I do want to touch on some things about the whole Berlin School, because we definitely have that, uh, how Klaus Schultz, a tangerine dream, the thing with the gear, and even the second generation of some of those people like Steve Roach, and um, a lot of that kind of stuff, because we like Depeche Mode, and, um, you know, music with beats, and there's really this segregation between a lot of the old school electronic camps, just because a lot of that old music they didn't have drum machines and stuff like that. And I love drum machines. I love beats. But by the same token, this is not necessarily, I mean, you could dance to this music, but it's not really club music. It's really music that's very personal, intimate, and sort of private. And even if you're hearing just a sound, there's gonna be some kind of rhythmic quality to it. It's kind of where we're coming from, is really trying to perfect that sound of working with uh, having a very impressionistic um, sound, lots of depth, lots of color, working maybe with sounds that are not so musical sounding, but um, the way we combine it with beats and other qualities of just bringing it together where it's not always so melodic or maybe something that's more a bit of noise or some kind of interesting noise where just at the right time, something melodic or a voice or a guitar comes in. Second culture is a hybridization, a stew, as it were, or a tonic of all of music history, everything, of, of classical music, of, of not jazz from a musicianship point of view, but from a conceptual point of view. And that is a big, big thing within second culture where I'd like to think that we're much more like um, contemporary visual art of, of like the concept. The concept is important. The ideas are important from the beginning. It's like I'm going to get an idea in my head first. Maybe probably a song title or something. Maybe not even try to put intention in there, but just having that like a mantra of a song title, an idea. And then I just start doing stuff, working with these instruments, like my paintbrushes. I do have a very intimate relationship with all this gear. I hope it comes out. I hope you see it. Thank you. <laughs>